Hey y'all and welcome to a scary empty max patch. So in this video we are going to create an oscilloscope using Jitter. So what is an oscilloscope? Well, uh, do you know the scope object? That's an oscilloscope. It basically represents the amplitude of a signal during time. So if I connect a cycle object here, then I give it maybe a different frequency, maybe a, a lower one. Yeah, exactly. We can see the amplitude of the signal during time. You can even change how many samples we visualize per buffer using this input here. So anyway, that's an oscilloscope. Now, if we connect on the second input of the scope object, another input, then we have a different behavior for the scope object. We will basically have that on the x-axis, this oscilloscope will display the amplitude of the first signal that comes inside, so the one from this cycle. And on the second input, it will display the amplitude from the second uh, cycle coming in. So if we try to change the, the phase of these two oscillators, uh, we can also have interesting effects. For example, we can have like a circle being displayed and all these kind of nice things. Um, now we are going to recreate this in Jitter. So let's get rid of this mess and let me get my Jit world uh, plus the camera. That's my snippet that uh, if you follow my videos you should also have already ready since a while. Otherwise it's just a Jit world with a bunch of attributes and a camera that we can move around using the Jit anim drive. Good. So now we need an audio signal. Let's get the cycle object. Let's give it a frequency of 100 or something like that. Let's get a second cycle and let's create a float number box that we will use to set the frequency of both of those. Good. Uh, let's create an easy duck object to hear what we are getting as an output. Let's maybe create a live gain object so we can set the out output amplitude. Something like that. Good, let's put this very much down. Uh, great, now we need a way to put this audio signal amplitude inside a matrix. We could do it with JIT poke, but we can also do it with JIT catch. So our old good JIT catch object, to which we give a frame size, so which means how many samples we want to collect before outputting our matrix, and let's say 512, and then let's give it mode two, so it will give us as an output a one-dimensional matrix of the dimension of the frame size containing on this all the samples that it just captured. So frame size 512. Uh, we need a couple of those because we need to capture the amplitude of uh, both those uh, audio generators. So let's connect these here and let's connect these here. Let's maybe put those guys a bit more on the right. Great, so now we need to activate our JIT world and send the bang that comes out from the middle output of the JIT world to those two JIT catch objects. So let's check with the JITP window, not JIT world, but JITP window, what we get as an output. Right, so this is our matrix containing the amplitude of those uh, uh, oscillators. Uh, let's check how big is this uh, matrix. It should be... 512 cells and in fact it's 512 cells monodimensional very well um, now we need to transform these into a matrix with three planes so the matrix that comes out from here is a matrix with one single plane and we need three of those because we are going to use ggl mesh which needs a matrix with three planes as an input to set the position of its vertices so let's create a JIT matrix, let's say three, float 32 and dimensions 512. So we're getting this uh, one plane matrix, uh, one dimensional that comes out from JIT catch and we are transforming it to a one dimensional but three planes output matrix. And every one of those planes contains all the same values that come from the JIT catch. So all the three planes are the same. Now we need a JIT gen object. So let's connect the first input to these three planes matrix and the second input to this uh, one plane matrix doesn't really matter that this is not three planes because anyway it's going to be adapted to be the same size and planes as the matrix that comes in the leftmost input that's a property of the JIT gen object which we already discussed in other videos and let's now create a ggl mesh so game uh, let's say draw mode line um, 
strip. So it will be a line that is all connected and will connect the last vertex with the first one. Let's give it a color, let's make it a kind of oscilloscopy green. And uh, that's going to suffice for the moment. And maybe let's set the line width to something a bit bigger. Like 4. Good. And let's connect the input to, to the output of JITGen. Uh, as you can see, we're already seeing something. This is our GGL mesh represented, uh, representing a line using the input from our JIT catch. Uh, since all the three planes have all the same values, we see only a diagonal line. That's how it is. Uh, let's maybe create also a background using a, simply a GGL grid shape, which we will say poly mode 1 1. And we will represent as a plane, right? And then we will say depth enable 0, uh, blend enable 1, and we're going to give it a layer of minus 1. What have I written? No, layer. Minus one, so we are sure that it's going to be represented below everything else. Cool. So now let's get inside our JIT gen. We need to make a couple of modifications here because, because we said that the oscilloscope represents on the X axis the amplitude from the first input and on the second and on the epsilon axis represent the amplitude from the second input. So X axis is going to be the first cycle, second axis, uh, epsilon axis is going to be the second cycle. So we're going to do something like that. Let's create a vector tree. X-axis, uh, let's switch the first component of these inputs. Since they're all the same, it doesn't really matter which one we switch. We're just going to switch the first one. It's going to be the stakes amplitude, and this is going to be the epsilon amplitude. And there we go. We got our oscilloscope. So let's now change the frequency of these two cycles so that they have different frequencies. Or maybe just different phases. So I'm going to change the phase for the second one with a float number box. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And there we go. So we are representing the amplitude of the first oscillator on the x-axis and the amplitude of the second oscillator on the epsilon axis. We can change the phase, we can change the frequency of the second oscillator to be different from the one of the first oscillator of course. Let's hear something. Yeah, that's pretty much how a scope object behaves. We can also, of course, use a sample to as an audio input. So let's take one of the built-in samples in Max, for example, this Prim Loop. Um, I can also like create a selector, so we can select between the different audio inputs. So I'm going to put this as the let's write two. This is going to be our first input, and I suppose I need another one. So the cycle is going to be our first input, and the audio sample is going to be our second input. So let's connect the first channel here and the second channel here, and then we need a radio group of size uh, 3. So 0 means close, so the first, uh, the first circle means close, the second means the cycle, and the Third one means the audio sample. So let's go with the audio sample. Cool. Uh, I think this is a mono sample. You can see that because uh, the amplitude is the same for the X and the Y axis. So that's not exactly what we are going for. We probably want to get uh, maybe the kick drum, drum loop. Maybe hopefully it's not a mono sample. Yeah, all right. This is not a mono sample. We can see that there is a difference uh, in the phases of the left and right channel. So we get our oscilloscope behaving properly. We can move around with the camera using W, A, S, D, Q, and Z keys on our keyboard. And there we go. We got our oscilloscope. We could then get a bit more fancy and uh, also use a GGL multiple. Just going to show you that quickly. Uh, let's say with two GL params. So GL params, we're going to set the position and the scale of the objects. And then we're going to create a GGL grid shape, automatic zero, as the target for this GGL multiple. We're going to set the position here, and then we need the scale value. So let's go again inside JITGen. Let's create a second output. Uh, create a vector with scale 0 0.1. 
can use this as our scale value and uh, it's a bit too big it's one 0 0.1 let's say 0 0.03 something like that good and uh, let's maybe connect the uh, gtl material to this uh, shape so it looks a bit cooler right uh, let's switch back to our cycle cool now we got a bunch of a bunch of shapes uh, uh shaping around and being three-dimensional and everything and it's pretty cool we can then yeah that's i like a lot when it does the circle thing cool and then you can get crazy and uh draw all sort of animations using sound if you are very proficient in this kind of things otherwise uh, you can just visualize the input from your audio sources right so that was it I hope it was interesting, hope it was fun, and if you liked the video, it would be cool if you will put a like into it, and if you want to learn about Jittering Max, then subscribe to the channel, there's a lot of material about it, and also check my Patreon and website to get an overview of all my shared patches. So, thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one, ciao ciao!